reflect all of that knowledge and all of that understanding, and it is essentially a work of art uh, unique to the individual person. And Crowley makes it clear that no one can tell anyone else how to invoke the Holy Guardian Angel. He's, there's, there's a method in, uh, in the Eighth Aether, uh, which Crowley says, take this as a guideline, but you know, I'm not going to tell you how to do this. No one can tell you how to do this. If you've got to this grade, you should understand magic and mysticism enough to be able to create that ritual and make it into uh, what he calls an expression of the beauty of the order. So to balance these two crises, this expression is an expression of unique individ individual creative effort. The next crisis is prefaced by uh, the, at, at, the exempt adept which is supposed to uh, come up with a new school of thought, and it's another unique individual expression of what one has learned, in a way intellectually, whereas the, uh, the HGA is more artistically. But both of these things go away. I mean, Crowley talks about uh, how the abyss experience essentially strips one of one's angel's attainments, even, and like one's relationship with the angel, and the angel can't help with crossing the abyss. So uh, it, that's when that part sort of goes away, because one doesn't really need that kind of guidance anymore. And I think that uh, just using the, uh, the examples that I've used are, have been chosen to demonstrate how there are essentially opposing practices. At first, you have, at first you have a foundation to build these oppositions on. Then you divide into these oppositions. Then you come up with a unification. Then you get a whole new set of oppositions supposedly existing within the stage of that unification. Then you completely define opposition in the rational thesis. Then you transcend opposition. But even when opposition is transcended, uh, you know, physical life and existence in the world is not, is, it's too much for that to be fully realized right away. So you have to have one more opposition above the abyss, above opposition itself, of magic and mysticism on one side and the other before complete freedom from restriction is possible. And now we open the floor. I know that jumps around all over the place, but there's no way to look at the thing as a whole without jumping around all over the place. Yes? So I have a question. Did you like self-initiate or did you contact yes. the AA? Uh, I, well, the, there's no the AA. Uh, there's a group that puts itself out there as the AA and there's no the AA. What's that? No one's really sure if the lineage is it's there. Well, it's not even a lineage issue. Crowley makes it clear that lineage isn't important to the AA. I mean, I mean that's the whole purpose of him putting out there the idea of self-initiation, and that's why he tells us that just because someone is in an AA, and he's also very clear people have stolen the name AA and used it to their own profit. I mean, any group, for example, that accepts money for magical teachings is not is without the order. That's absolutely stated. Uh, okay, so, but did you have someone to guide you through it? Uh, yeah, uh, well, not exactly, well, yes. Okay. It, essentially, I took John Dee's oration to wit for wisdom, and I said that uh, when, after, shortly, I took the, took the oath, and I would say that right after I woke up and right before I went to bed, and I did that for a period of time until uh, I contacted an Enochian spirit, and they told me that they could help me find a suitable guide. And then for a long time I had, if I had questions, there was a spiritual entity that I went to. I was given a specific ritual around the letters of its name to use to contact it. And then if I had questions, I'd ask that. And I always recommend people do that. If they have questions about spiritual ideas, then contact spiritual entities. That's what ceremonial magic is for. Um, just with regard to the idea that I mentioned before of the AA as a body system. People who are interested in this and wanna and do want to find a magical teacher because I fully understand wanting to do that. I I've, I've been practicing ceremonial magic for quite a while before I uh, actually took the AA oath and did that. Um, but if you're just getting into magic at the same time as you're just getting into the AA, it is reasonable to want an instructor. And uh, I'll, I'll emphasize the money issue again. Anyone who takes money for this kind of thing is a fraud. Uh, well, like if you look at some something. Sorry, I didn't. Mean I no, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. But if you look at something like the OTO, like they take, they have a monthly fee. That's the, not that's taking different. money. That's different. The OTO is a different okay. organization. Okay. No, I know, but I mean, like, we're, when we're looking at someone taking money to be a magical teacher, like someone. Oh no, I don't. I'm not. If someone's just taking like a lot of, I can't really speak on the issue, but I know like things that I've been involved with, like I had a, a monthly fee, but it was for like a logical reason. It well, wasn't like, yes. hey, I'm paying your rent. It's like, hey, we're paying rent. 
Right, stuff. absolutely. Yeah. And, I, and I, I have no problem with the OTO taking money. I've actually tried to raise money for the OTO myself. Um, okay. Because I, I, but their mission is something completely different. What they're trying well, to accomplish. I understand publish. that they're separate. I was just kind of using it as an example. What about like the? Can you speak on like the temple of Thelma, which is like a separate? Have you had any? Uh, like, not really. I mean, no? I, I know I know some people are involved. Uh, I I'm not really uh, connected with them at all. Okay, I just wondered if because my understanding, like I personally want to go down this path of the AA, and then I've been told by different advisors that sometimes it might be better to go through the Temple of Thelema first. But then when I look at what they offer, it seems that a lot of the stuff I already understand. Well, so, uh, one of the one of the AA um, requirements is to form, you know, schools of thought and ideas. And if, if that's where the Temple of Thelema sprung from, then that's perfectly reasonable. But it's not going to teach the same things as the AA and the AA curriculum. Now, mind you, if I'm, and I'm not familiar with their teachings myself, uh, but if they would give you the kind of grounding that you need to accomplish what you accomplish at the level of a student, where someone is expected to demonstrate, you know, the knowledge of different systems, ideas about different mystical ideas, different religious texts, and so on and so forth. I mean, if it teaches that kind of knowledge, then it could very well, you know, help you out with the student grade. A liberal arts education is also good for that, honestly. Yeah. Um, I think that's... Uh, I think that's actually fundamental because that's one of the places that you learn how to write essays and you learn about different, you learn about history, you learn about philosophy, you learn about you know literature and stuff like that. Um, and I, I, a knowledge of those things is a, is a precondition essentially to even taking the, the oath of the probation. So. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. You mentioned at one point the, uh, the Magister Templi grade and uttering the word of the eon. Or That's the magus grade. The magus grade, sorry. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, so what's your view, I'd like to know your view on Freyder Rakad then. The idea I of think he was... Uh, I'm not a fan. That's how Crowley was elevated to the magus grade, is my understanding. That he accepted uh, Akkad as the Magister Templi and then elevated Crowley to the magus grade. Uh, I, 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 yes, but Crowley's opinion of it later was a cod fell apart, and I kind of see that in, I, and I think that's the problem with trying to take the oath of the abyss too early in one's career. He took it when he was in the Neophyte grade. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. So he hadn't even, he hadn't done the work without a college yet. Uh, and I mean, I'm not saying that he's not an interesting thinker and hasn't done some interesting things, but he's another one of these people who get their hands on it, and all of a sudden they want to rewrite the whole book, yeah. rewrite the whole system. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so I, I'm, de I'm just not impressed by that. I don't think the system needs to be rewritten. I mean, as I've said before about Libra 777, like we have a set series of symbols because we need those to be able to communicate our spiritual ideas to each other. It's like if someone decided to rewrite the <laughs> alphabet, say, I'm only going to use these letters, my special letters from now on. And then it's like, we'll try to communicate after that. Uh, did I? Yeah, I just had a question. Um, could you elaborate a little bit on this notion or the concept of sort of unifying with opposites or transcending with these opposites? Well, it's interesting. Um, Actually, Crowley is taking two ideas, and uh, well, he, well, he reconciles a couple of different ideas here. Uh, and in many ways, it's connected to the Hindu idea of Maya, or the idea that existence itself is an illusion, separate, separateness is an illusion. So wherever we see separateness, we're in fact seeing just sort of a veil behind the truth. And the other idea that influenced him heavily was uh, the philosopher Hegel. Uh, and Hegel's sort of, one of his major things in terms of thinking was he saw things in terms of what he called thesis, antithesis, synthesis. and I would highly recommend it. He's, not, he's actually not really that difficult to read if you get a good translation. Um, but uh, basically he talks about how the way to progress an idea, because Hegel was all about making progress, which is essentially what the AA is about as well. Actually, Hegel quote, or sorry, Crowley quotes Hegel a couple times without attributing the quotes in different parts of his work. Um, but the idea is things move forward by taking one thing, taking the opposite things, and finding the way to make them work together. And uh, that's actually reflected somewhat in the Kabbalah uh, in terms of when you look at, when Crowley wants you to start looking at Hebrew words and what numbers they add up to and seeing the fact that supposedly opposite words will frequently add up to the same number and so on and so forth. Does that help? Or? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm familiar with Hegel's 